All right, so today we have a 19-inch K7000 that was recently given to me by a friend up in Wisconsin. He came down from Wisconsin to Kansas to check out and visit the arcade, and with him he brought a 19-inch G07 and a 19-inch K7000, uh, both of which have issues and need repaired. But he also brought me a giant uh, furniture chair box full of chassis, a, another somewhat large box of chassis, a Rubbermaid tote full of chassis, and about four or five loose chassis on top of the Rubbermaid tote. So he brought me about 40, <laughs> count them, 40 chassis. For, uh, just He gave them to me out of the kindness of his heart. There was a operator who was closing down and getting, getting rid of all of his inventory in his warehouse and said, here, come and take this stuff, otherwise it's going to the dump. So my buddy uh, in Wisconsin went to this guy's place and picked up everything that he had. And he contacted me and said, hey, I got all this stuff for free. Uh, I don't, not really interested in keeping any of it. Do you want it all for free? I said, absolutely. So when he came down to visit the arcade, he brought me 40 some odd, give or take, chassis and two complete monitors. So there's going to be a lot of content here coming soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And I may take a separate video and go through all of the different chassis and which, which ones we have, what the conditions are, things like that. So that may be a little bit later. It might be a rather long video too. So we'll see. Uh, but for now, we're going to get these two complete monitors working first. Then we'll go through all the loose chassis and start working on all those. So this is a 19-inch K7000. The other one is a 19-inch G07. Uh, well, there's only there's no such thing as anything other than 19-inch G07 that I'm aware of, except for a 13-inch, I guess. But uh, so two 19-inch monitors, G07, K7000. So we're going to work on the K7000 first. And as we can see here, it says was working uh, in burger time both cabinet and monitor fuses blue so obviously something is very wrong with this uh, it's shorted but it is a complete monitor it's all here so let's get the chassis off of the tube and go through and see what we can figure out all right so the chassis is now extricated from the tube and well let's see what we can figure out uh flyback doesn't appear to be cracked anywhere I don't see any evidence of arcing. I'll give this a quick brush off here. I don't see any arcing down in here where it likes to arc. I don't see anything on the side. The face. Uh, there's one little crack across here. Uh, da -da -da, little crack across down here, but those are normal for the white knob flyback. Not going to really worry about that. It does appear that someone has done a rudimentary cap kit. They did not replace any of the uh, bipolar caps here for the filtering on the video input. And as I move my finger across the bottom here, look at the width coil. I have not turned this over yet. I took it right off the chat, or I'm sorry, right off the tube, uh, set the tube off to the side and put this right on the test pitch. I have not turned this over to inspect the bottom. Um, but it looks like the it may have an issue with the width coil. If the width coil is out of circuit, that will destroy C38 and destroy your fuse and likely your voltage regulator, HOT, who, who knows what else. But this is not a good sign. So we'll turn it over here in a minute. But looking at the top side, uh, I don't really see anything off the bat except... Well, yeah, I mean, not really. I don't see any broken pots. Pots are all okay. No outward signs of explosion or roasted resistors. D18 looks okay. C38 is not visibly blown up. Uh, everything looks visually okay on the top. Uh, of course, the fuse is blown. If we zoom in on it, we can see that uh, it's not good. And I did, my fingers are still filthy from that. Adam's family playfield swap. I got like permanent, permanent uh, black, <laughs> permanent black stains on my fingers and whatnot. So I apologize about that. But yeah, uh, so that's gone. We'll just go ahead and toss that in the garbage. So let's flip this bad boy over and look at that horizontal width coil. Uh, well, it's not burned, but it. It is definitely out of circuit. Uh, 
if we zoom in here, right here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but yeah, that one's not in, that one's not in. That these two back here aren't in. The whole thing is out. The whole if your horizontal width coil is out of circuit, that would definitely be a big problem. <laughs> so is that our only problem? I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to go through and test everything, of course, but it looks like someone's done some reflow. We've got they damaged a pad here, so they bent the leg of the capacitor over, which, you know, if it if it works, it's fine. Um, can't say I've never done that myself. Another example of that over here on the 100 microfarad cap. Um, but otherwise, I guess really not too bad. They've done all the reflow. They did the the solder bridge like I do, so that's already done for R101, so that's somewhat good, I guess. So I guess not really too bad, but they... Uh, I think really the only thing that caused this to fail upon initial inspection here is the width coil being out of circuit and it looks like it was arcing to the point to where it just caused the fuse to go because this whole area this solder these solder joints are like super oxidized and burned so well first thing I want to do is let's just extract that width coil so we can clean up those pads we need to inspect these whenever you have a situation like this you don't want to just go adding new solder you want to remove the existing solder inspect and clean the pads and then reinstall the component with fresh solder because yeah this is all burned up otherwise you're not gonna you're gonna end up back in the same boat you were before you started Okay, so that's out, and yeah, if we look here, that is burned up. It's this, I'm not sure if I can get a good angle on it, but see how this, see, look at this one compared to these. This is all burned up from having a bad connection, which, which generated extra heat, which burned up the pad. So we need to clean all that up here. This might be the first K7000 video I featured on the channel in all the 7000 videos I featured that had this particular problem. And again, I'm just using my spot sanding pin here with the actual fiberglass, and I'll link it down below. If you want to pick one of these up for yourself, and that's that's completely gone. That pad completely burned itself up. Let's grab a different pair of uh, needle nose here, whatever the heck you want to call them, pry tool, and uh, see if we can... No, that's... yeah. That's gone. So we're going to have to figure something out with that. Yep, well that would explain our uh, blown fuse. And who knows what else is wrong here. So let's fix this first, and then go through and uh, see what else we can find. Okay, I think that's good. Now let's fix the, the legs of this here. So it's this one. 
I like to use this pin to clean off the oxidation on the pins also. Because if the if this is all oxidized, you're not going to get any solder to stick to it. No matter how good your pad is, you're going to end up with bad joints and again be right back in the same boat you were when you started. So go through here and clean off all these pins and oxidation and everything. And that looks pretty good. Oop, hang on. Piece of jump camera. So... Those all look pretty good now. Pretty good, I must say. So let's stick this bad boy back in here. If I can. There we go. And... Beautiful. There's one. Two. Three. Four. Now I should mention I should mention that these are all in sear. This whole, this is all one. Okay, so this is a coil. There's only two connections. This this connection right here, this connection right here, which goes across C38, and then all these are the same connection which run up here across this resistor. Uh, I believe that's a resistor. Yeah. Uh, and then it runs off here this way to your horizontal. Uh, or deflection coil. So this is all one trace all together here. So if this was open, if this was open, then the series you lose connection across here. So your horizontal deflection coil is not part of the circuit over here across to your voltage regulator and things like that. So that's this burning up absolutely will cause this to, the fuse to go out. So this is all one circuit or one series trace, I should say. So with this one being out of the trace, that's a problem. Now, why is that? not poking through here. Did I bend that over when I put this back together? Please tell me I didn't do that. If I did, I gotta pull this back out again. Gosh dang it. Well, looks like this one's folded over on itself, so I'm going to have to uh, Yank this back out, fix that, and put it back in, and I'm going to cut away and come back, and then we'll solder this in when I have it fixed. Alright, so I got it extracted, fixed that pin. There you go. And uh, soldered all those back in. So now we're going to have to figure out a way to fix this. We're probably just going to have to use a piece of uh, component leg, and we're going to go with a... Uh, See if we can use a beefy one. Do I have? Uh, yeah. Let's use this one from a 1500 microfarad cap here, and let's just see how big that needs to be. We're gonna go right here with it, so we can still use the cap if we need to. Get that back in there. All right. Grab another pair of tweezers here that I can use to actually hold this. And let's get this bad boy fixed here. Put that in place. And let's bend this around like so. And I think that will work. 
Nice. Well, there you go. Quick and easy. So, with that now repaired, let's go through... Oh, what is this ugly mess? Somebody's, uh... Done some HOT replacements here, and... I mean, it's... It's not pretty, but if it works, it looks like they just lifted the pad, and the pad is lifted up and over. Might be able to fix that. It's probably gonna have to come out anyway due to uh, being bad, but... Let's go through and do some testing on top, then we'll do some testing on bottom, see what what else is bad, and uh, kind of go from there. It's possible the fuse... It's possible the fuse only went out because of the, the coil being out of circuit, so that everything else could, might possibly be okay, but we'll find out here. So we'll start with R103. This should be 3 ohms. Uh, well, actually 2.7 should be roughly 2.7. So I'm going to go to the top and then the other leg here and we get Leads are good 2.7 perfect. All right So we're gonna test um, R104 is supposed to be 15 ohms if R104 reads 15 ohms then all of our rectifier diodes are good if it reads something like 5 ohms, then one of our rectifier diodes is shorted. So, uh, if this reads 15 ohms, we can go ahead and skip checking the rectifier diodes. And it reads 15.4, so those are all going to be okay. Uh, let's check R89. That should be 3.9 ohms. And it's this big white ceramic resistor here. I'll try and sneak in on this side. And then here, and we get... 3.9, exactly what it's supposed to read. Uh, R101 is this guy right here. It should read around, around 4.5K ohm in circuit. It's a 6.5K ohm resistor, but in circuit with everything else, it's going to read about 4.5 is what we're looking for. So we get... Uh, 4.0 is kind of low. That's, that's, a, that's, a, a read, that's a low reading. Uh, I'm not concerned really too much because there's other stuff in the circuit, but four, oh, I think, oh, I think that reads 4.0 because we do have something else shorted. The HOT is likely shorted, which brings this down, if memory serves, but uh, it's not open. That's all we're concerned with is to make sure it's not open and to make sure it doesn't read something way wild off. We're only about point, we're only about 500 ohms off, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's probably because something else is shorted, and we'll get to that here probably in a minute. Um, so, okay, 103, 104, 89, 101, rectifier diodes, uh, okay, R89, we just checked, uh, R96 should be 1.8K, which is this guy here, and it reads 1.8, um, I always forget which one this is, this is R88 should be 1.8K also, and it is, uh, R2, no, R97 should be 270 ohms, and it is, okay. Uh, D18, uh, this diode down here in the uh, deflection coil connections should read like a diode, 0. 0.5, that's good. Uh, we can read our HOT on the top side, uh, negative lead goes on the middle pin. And each leg should be about 0 .5, uh, 0.45 is voltage drop, so test the HOT, and it's shorted. As suspected, yep, given our low reading on R101, I knew that something was shorted, and sure enough, HOT. Uh, we can check our voltage regulator by simply going across the B-plus resistor. We should get, I believe, uh, 220 ohms on the 19-inch, the 25-inch is 180. So if we get 220 ohms, our voltage regulator should be okay. Uh, and we get 2.8. So our voltage regulator is shorted and our HOT is shorted. Not unexpected with, uh, the, with the coil being out of circuit. So uh, now we can check our C38 width cap, which uh, we're just checking to make sure it's not shorted. And that's these two points right here. And it's uh, 500 ohms. Uh. 500 ohms is <laughs> 500 ohms is not a good reading, but with uh, the voltage regulator and the HOT shorted, yeah, well, 
that's uh, to be expected. But C38 itself is not shorted. It's reading 500 ohms, and that's probably because of uh, other shorts on the circuit. But uh, so C38, I'm going to say on, on a limb here, it's okay. Uh, the last thing really you need to check is um, oh, I don't need to check. I know they're going to read shorted, but C36. So this chassis has the four leg C36 in here, the critical safety cap. Uh, the way you read that is you go diagonal across these two points and we should get a 0.45 voltage drop. So diagonal from this point to over here, shorted, and then diagonal from this point to over here, shorted, and that's because our HOT is shorted. So uh, what you want to do is remove the HOT from the circuit and test that again if it reads correctly, or it shouldn't read, I think it should be open if memory serves, or one of them reads a dial, one doesn't. Let's just test that real quick. We can remove the HOT by just taking this uh, collector leg out of the circuit. Actually, I think it's the base. I, I can never remember correctly. All right, so I just desoldered it. Let's make sure it's actually out of the circuit by touching the next point on the trace and then touching the trace. So there's the trace. Now let's touch the leg. Okay, the leg is open. So now if we go back and check the critical safety cap, see, we do not get a short anymore. And we'll go back the opposite way, diagonal down here and up to here. Yeah, so no longer shorted. So our critical safety cap is fine. It's just reading shorted because the HOT is shorted. So uh, I think that's everything that we need to test for critical components for power. Uh, like D13, D14, R91, R92, those are just for uh, vertical deflection. They're not going to cause the chassis to not fire up. Uh, we can, this particular chassis has the extra diode and the cap in here. Uh, if we look closely, there's an extra capacitor in here in front of the width coil, and there's a diode next to it. I'm not sure if you could even see it, uh, but it's back there behind it. Uh, not every chassis has those components and they can cause power problems if they're bad. So we're just gonna check those real quick, make sure that they're not shorted. If you don't have them installed in your chassis, you don't gotta worry about it. But here's the diode. Flip these around the other way. I can never remember which way it's installed. So there's our diode, that's fine. And then our capacitor should read the same. Yeah, so neither capacitor nor diode is shorted. So I think our only issue here is voltage regulator and HOT. So, Let's yank these puppies out of here. Okay, as soon as I get my bearings here. Yeah, I was right. The, the trace got pushed up and bent over, but now it's uh, flat again, so we got that fixed. All right, so HOT is desoldered. This is the story of a girl who cried a river and drowned the whole world. And while she looks so sad in photographs, I absolutely love her when she smiles. How many lovers would stay just to put up with this every day and all day? How do we wind up this way? Wearing the clothes and the soles of her shoes. Your clothes never wear as well the next day. And your hair never falls in quite the same way. You never seem to run out of things to say. This is the story of a girl. A pretty face she hid from the world. Okay. Yeah, a quick and easy way to test that voltage regulator is just go to the B plus resistor. If you if you read 220 ohms, then your voltage regulator should be fine. If you uh, read, you know, two ohms, then it's obviously shorted. So, case in point, quick and easy test. And that's regardless of which type of voltage regulator that you have. So, uh, and a quick lesson here. 
you can see that the number on this is STR3123. The 19 inch is STR3123, the 25 inch is STR3130, and the last three numbers are the B plus regulation. So in this case, because we have a 19 inch, this should be a 123 volt regulator. On the 25 inch, the 130 is a 130 volt regulator, so that's how you know which one to put in which chassis. 19 inch is 123, 25 is 130. So if you ever suspect you have the wrong regulator installed, that's the easiest way for you to know. All right, now let's check our B-plus resistor now that that's out. And I'm not going to show it on camera, but you'll have to trust me when I say that our, uh, we now read uh, 197.9 ohms. And that's we don't read 220 because there's an additional resistor under here. So, All right, so that's gone and out. Uh, the, the HOT. I need to sneak some tweezers in here and hold on to the nut. I'm just a squirrel trying to get a nut. Gonna make you sweat till you bleed. <clears throat> Come on, let's sweat, baby. Let the music take control. Let the rhythm move you. Sweat, sweat. Okay. And what do we get? Out of circuit. Beep. Nine ohms. Nine ohms. Well, you can't see it. There's three ohms there. So three ohms to there and nine ohms to there. She's a goner. So I'm going to take this HOT and this voltage regulator and throw them in the garbage. That's not the garbage. That's the floor. There we go. All right, now we're going to have to source ourselves some replacement parts here. And got uh, some 123s here. And some 1398s here. And if that's all we end up needing, that'll be fine. Everybody, everybody gives these white knob flybacks a bad rap, but I'm telling you, if you got a white knob flyback, it's been working for uh, almost 40 years. You can see here that 1986. So if this operates and functions with very good focus and good picture and everything like that, I am not changing this out. There's absolutely no reason. Everyone always changes flybacks and stuff as a preventative maintenance or preventive maintenance. Well, you're going to cause more problems than you're trying to fix because if this is functional and working and has good focus and knows no problems, there's no reason to change the flyback. Don't do it. That's my opinion. So, okay, I guess we'll do the regulator first. It's always fun trying to get these in here with these wires in the way and not to not disturbing the uh, insulator and then trying to line it back up oh that went rather easy until I dropped the screw and then I can't find What I'm looking for. Okay. Dance magic, dance magic, dance magic, dance magic, dance. Jump magic, jump magic, jump magic, jump magic, jump. When you tighten these down, they don't need to be really secure. You just want to give it a nice little tighten and that's it. They don't need to be uh, monkey effed on there. <laughs> uh, we had a, uh, a saying when I was turning wrenches on airplanes. They, uh, we had a, whenever screws would be so tight you couldn't get them loose by hand, you know, obviously somebody monkey effed them on there. But Okay, so those are both tight and secure. Uh, we can solder this back in.
one, a two who, a three, three. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. Yes, I'm old. We're all old. Let's face it, no one young's watching this. We're all old. I just turned 44 the other day, so I realize some of the people watching this are probably older than 44, but to me, uh, 44 seems old. I don't feel like I'm 44, but I'm 44, getting up there. Okay, just snug is all you need. Let's make sure our center pin is not touching the frame, and it's not. Insulator's installed. Let's solder it in. Everything looks okay. No lifted pads. There's one. There's two. Okay, there's three. And for good measure, we're going to just combine all that. There we go. Okay. And let's clip some of this. All right. And I do believe that's it. I need to... Uh, Attach the missing zip tie back here. Okay. And uh, I'm tempted to re I'm tempted to redo the cap kit because of how kind of janky it's been installed. You know, it doesn't take more than maybe 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes to do a cap kit on a 7000. So I'm tempted to go ahead and redo the cap kit, uh, but I'll probably just do that off camera if it needs it, because uh, with these different caps being in here, it's not going to affect the operation of the chassis, assuming that it ran fine until the, um, what the hell is that called? Horizontal coil. It ran fine until the coil burned itself up or the pad got loose from Bass Auto Joint. So I'm, f I'm sure the caps are fine. So I think with that, uh, everything is tested and... Actually, you know what? We didn't test after we put the components in. So with the new regulator in there, we should get about 197 ohms again. Yep, 195, give or take. Uh, and then we'll test our HOT. 0.45 voltage drop. 0.48, okay. They're always different. Uh, and then we'll test our C69 diagonal. Yep, same reading as the HOT. That's what you're expecting to see. So that's good. Now, I'll bet you dollars to donuts that if we go back to R101, now it'll read closer to 4.5 on the ohms. If I can get a good reading on it. Come on, you rat bastard. There you go. Look at that. 4.8. 4.95. So, yeah, I'm used to it being around 4.5, but uh, you saw it went from 4.0, 4. 4. 4.0K to 5.0K, and that's because we had the shorted HOT. So, if you have an R101 that reads low like that, you know, check your HOT. So, with that all being done, let's take one last look at the solder joints. Uh, R104 needs reflowed, but it's still connected. R101 is connected. They did the good job on that. R89 appears to be okay. They reflowed that. Uh, I don't see any broken header pins on the on the uh, deflection coil coils plural, I should say. Uh, we've got a bad solder joint on the red pin for the video, which I'll just reflow that here real quick. Not going to affect power, uh, but okay. I think we're ready to go. Uh, I need to grab a fuse. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use my 
uh, my two amp circuit breaker and what I do is whenever I have these shorting fuse chassis uh, I always just simply connect these across here like so and now I have a circuit breaker in here as opposed to blowing fuses uh, and the part number for this is 7277-2-2 the last number indicates the amperage so if you want a 3 amp it's a dash 3 7277-2-3-4-5 whatever the case may be so uh, let's get this back on a tube and see what it does Okay, back on the tube, all hooked up. We got our anode neck yoke ground power video remote. I got all the color pots set to center, wiped them back and forth and put them to center, which I always do for a nice good baseline. We can adjust from there. Uh, TPG is hooked up just temporarily for, to see if it gives us a good video, if it does power up and work. We got power and everything, everything like I said, so let's just turn it on and see if it works now with everything that we did. And if it does, we'll get it on the tripod, make some adjustments, see what we can make, uh, how well we can make it look, and go from there. So here we go. One, two, three. Yep. Came on. Circuit breaker did not pop. And it's running. And it works. Uh, and all of our testing indicated that it should work, unless we had a faulty flyback or something else that was bad that we don't normally test. Uh, our testing indicated that it should work. So let me get the tripod uh, set up with the camera and we'll make some adjustments as opposed to doing this handheld unprofessional stuff here. So hang on a moment. All right, so obviously we'll start with vertical hold and I can tell you our contrast is too high. Um, the rent is too damn high. So vertical hold. Got it, okay. Uh, we've got some stretching up here, so obviously we have a 50, 60 hertz issue, or we've got something going on with the caps, but uh, yeah, sorry about not, I can't lock the refresh rate, but if we, uh, let's see if we can adjust our 50, 60 hertz pot and fix that stretching on the top up here. I'll wait for this black bar to come down, then we'll try it here, all right. Oh yeah, that was it. Sweet, okay. Uh, now we can do, uh, let's turn contrast down. Bloop. Okay, brightness right there. Uh, tube's a bit weak, uh, but not too bad. Uh, let's do vertical position. Uh, we'll go right there, vertical size right there. Does H position work? Yes, it does. And we are perfect on our width, so we don't need to make any adjustments there. Yeah, look at that. RGB good. Sure is. That's not bad at all. Well, how about that? Uh, all right, I'm going to turn this off, and then I'm going to wipe this down, because I'm going to... I've had in the past, when I, I tried to clean the, the surface of the picture tube twice, uh, the static electricity... Uh, from that action, coupled with the high voltage, killed the chassis, zapped out the uh, voltage regulator, or blew the fuse. So I do not wipe down live monitors. I always turn them off first. I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to get a little alcohol on my rag here. And we're going to wipe all of this off here, and it comes off without a hitch. Do the whole screen. Flip the rag over, give it a dry, and let's see how it looks uh, now. Should still be on the RGB pattern. Sorry about the glare on the top of the screen here. I wonder if there's something I could do about that. Is that better? That's yeah, better. Threw a towel up there. Uh, yeah, it's pretty tired. Let's hook up an actual board here and... Uh, I'm going to leave it running. I'm going to hook up an actual board here. We'll go with uh, Ultimate MK3. And we'll swap the video connector. Good lord, that was on there. And... There we go. Yeah, it's darker, of course, because the test pattern generator outputs a higher uh, power, or not power, higher uh, video output. 
So we'll go with vertical hold again. There we go. Uh, all right, so brightness all the way down. Contrast all the way... What in the world? I think this contrast pot is jacked. What in the world? I'm, a, I'm adjusting the contrast pot. I'm a, look at this. I think that contrast pot is uh, dirty. See, now I'm... Yeah, that contrast pot was dirty because... Nope, nope, maybe not. Something's wonky here. Well, that's about 99% all the way down. We'll just leave it right there. Okay. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, that's weird. But, okay. Screen pot up until we get the raster lines. Back down until they go away, which will be there. Now let's turn up our brightness till the background is no longer black. Right there, back down till it just is. We're gonna go right there with it. We'll turn up our contrast. Now let's hit our focus. Uh, right about there is good. Man, I'm sorry about the refresh rate there, guys. I just, I, this camera is so cheap that it doesn't have an option to lock it into uh, uh, the 60 hertz refresh rate. So, okay, H position, move that over this way. And uh, I'll say right there. Actually, let's turn our contrast down slightly. That's better. Yeah, this tube is just a bit tired. Oh, I know what was happening. The green gun was shorting. That's why we're. That's what was happening. Is we got that flash of all green, and we had the retrace lines. That's a, a green gun shorting out. Interesting. Let's turn our blue down slightly. And we need more red also. Let's turn up our red cutoff. That's better. A little more red drive. That's better. Um, vertical size needs to come down slightly. That's better. Yeah, there we go. That's not bad. It looks oversaturated in the camera, but in person it's pretty good. Um, I wonder if I can get closer here, maybe. Yeah, it, it looks a little bit oversaturated and darkened through the camera, but it's not picking it up in person. It looks pretty good. So you'll have to just uh, trust me, uh, trust me. Uh, anything, we probably could turn the brightness down slightly. Contrast up a bit, that's, that's pretty good right there. Yep, happy with that, that looks pretty good. Well, all right, uh, it is a bit too wide. I wanna see if maybe I can adjust that width down a little bit. And we'll use our proper adjustment tool here. I don't know if you can even see it. Nope, can't see it. But we'll use our proper adjustment tool. See if we can... Oh, yeah. Sweetness. Look at that. Awesome. Right about there. Perfecto. Well, there you have it. I'll do the cap kit off camera and the reflow that I've shown a million times, and uh, we'll call this fixed. Round one. I only have three buttons here, so don't judge me. Shorting blue gun. This <laughs> I got shorting green guns and shorting blue guns. Well, this tube may just need to run for a while to get it back to life. So, yeah, I'll just uh, you know after I do the cap kit and the reflow, I'll let it run for a, a little while and. Uh, 
because uh, I mean it probably hasn't been ran in so long the the guns have some junk on them so but we were, we had a shorting green gun and then we had a shorting blue gun I'm waiting for the red gun to short so <laughs> anyway uh, before that happens I'll go ahead and shut this off do the cap kit reflow let it run for a while and we'll call it good so uh, barring any unforeseen circumstance we'll call this done and otherwise I appreciate it stay tuned for the geo 7 repair after this one and then we'll go through and do all of the overview of all the chassis that I got that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So stay tuned for that. I appreciate it. I'll link down below uh, the sanding pin that I talked about. And uh, like, share, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more. And we'll see you then.